Welcome back and alive now. I'm Austin Westfall. Microsoft appears to be going nuclear with the tech company slated to start using nuclear power as soon as 2028. Microsoft recently signing a 20 year agreement with leading nuclear energy producer Constellation Energy to get this done. Another interesting angle to this is that the deal will restart a portion of the Three Mile Island nuclear generation station in Pennsylvania. We'll talk more about Three Mile Island in a moment, but standing by, is John Kotek. He's the Senior Vice President of Policy Development and Public Affairs at the Nuclear Energy Institute. John, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Austin. Absolutely. So this is an interesting one. Give us a bit of history on what we need to know about the facility that's coming back online for Microsoft. Three Mile Island is located near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Some mm -hmm. may be familiar with the fact that it had a partial meltdown incident in the late 70s. What's been happening there ever since? Yeah, so while they did have the accident 45 years ago at one of the uni units, the other one continued operating uh, and it operated through the year 2019, at which point it was shut down because it was receiving insufficient revenues in the electricity markets. This was before people were placing a lot of value on the firm clean aspect of nuclear energy generation. But a lot's changed in the last five years. And a lot of the big tech firms, Microsoft, Amazon Web Services, and especially Google, have been highlighting the need for firm clean generation, meaning generation that is both carbon free, but is also available around the clock if we're gonna to get to an affordable, reliable uh, and clean energy grid. And so that's led to deals like the one you see here between Microsoft and Constellation to bring back uh, a uh, mothball nuclear power plant. You know, I gotta ask you because the nuclear energy industry has taken some hefty PR punches over the years. I don't think it's a stretch to say that Chernobyl in Ukraine and Fukushima in Japan can serve as catalysts for concern because of the high profile nature of those stories. What do you wish more people though knew about the safety of nuclear energy? Yeah, well, so what's happening now is people, as we look to uh, decarbonize our energy system, they're really being confronted with the need to look at the full life cycle of impacts of our various energy generating resources. And so with respect to nuclear in particular, you talk about the Three Mile Island incident, that was 45 years ago. The industry has learned a lot about how to operate these plants, both more safely and more reliably. And those two things really go hand in hand. And with the improved safety record of the industry over the decades has come a dramatic increase in reliability of these plants. When I started in the industry 35 years ago, the plants would operate something like two thirds of the time. These days, nuclear power plants operate 92, 93% of the time, year in and year out, making nuclear energy far and away the most reliable uh, form of electricity that we have. That reliability, the resilience of nuclear plants from things like natural disasters and the low carbon nature uh, of nuclear is the reason why so many policymakers are now focusing on nuclear power as uh, a key to getting to an affordable, reliable and lower carbon grid. You know, as I was researching for this segment, I read a lot of what you've been discussing, that nuclear energy is nearly carbon free. It's broadly considered more reliable than energy sources like solar and wind. If that's the case, why isn't it more popular? Maybe the better question is, should it be more popular? Uh, it, well, so it should be, and it is. In fact, recent survey results uh, show that nuclear is the one generating technology that has actually seen an uptick in approval over the last half a dozen years or so, because more and more people are being confronted with the types of questions that we just talked about earlier. That's why you've seen the United States committing to a larger nuclear build out along with a lot more countries around the world. That culminated last fall in a pledge by more than two dozen countries to triple nuclear generation by 2050. So we're seeing a real uptick, not just in interest here in the US, but really around the globe. You know, too, an interesting thing here is this announcement is happening in 2024. The I believe they're going to try and actually start operating in 2028. Why is this happening now? Why didn't this come any sooner? Uh, because it really took companies valuing that zero carbon uh, attribute of nuclear along with the resilience to make the finances make sense. Right. And so what you're seeing is you've now got companies that are committed to decarbonizing their uh, electricity consumption, willing, frankly, to pay more. 
or for the types of generation that that uh, nuclear energy provides. And it, as we bring more things like you know more wind and more solar that are that are also very low carbon, but that are intermittent in their generation, and as we see things like coal plants shutting down, you're going to need something that's available 24/7 to keep the system in balance. And so as we bring in more of those intermittent resources, as we see more things like coal shut down, it's placing a premium on what nuclear energy can do. That's why you've seen this deal here. You saw Amazon Web Services sign a deal with uh, the Susquehanna nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania. You've seen an effort to bring back a nuclear power plant in Michigan. You're also seeing a lot more interest in building new nuclear. So we had the two new plants come on in line in Georgia in the last year or two, but there's a lot more utilities that are now planning on new nuclear to come online in the 2030s. You know, I got to ask is, what is the future of nuclear energy? Is it <clears throat> tech? Is it AI? Is it more than that? Yeah, so I, I think it's really all of the above because certainly we're seeing a lot of demand come from data centers and AI. And that's, that's caused a, a real strong growth in electricity demand. We're, we're also seeing interest in electrifying transportation, uh, moving away from fossil fuels into electricity for things like building heat, for industrial uh, heating applications. All of that is coming together to create uh, a interest in and a demand for new nuclear that's anything uh, like I've seen in my 35 year career. I read something in The Economist that was interesting to me. It, it, they said that the U.S. is far behind China on nuclear power, but yeah. doesn't the U.S. currently have the world's largest fleet of nuclear power plants? How are we lagging behind China? Yeah, no, we do. That's an important distinction. We, we do have the most operating nuclear power plants in the world. The Chinese are rapidly catching up. They just passed France as the second largest source of nuclear generation in the world. Uh, but whereas China has brought on about 40 new nuclear power plants over the last decade and is building 30 more, we have brought on three in the last decade and don't have uh, any that are uh, in full construction right now. We have some where site preparations are underway. But what that underscores is a need for us to get busy again. And if we're going to meet this uh, growth in electricity demand for the reasons we talked about earlier, we're gonna have to have a lot more new nuclear alongside a lot more wind, solar, storage, uh, in the transmission lines to knit it all together. All right, John Kotek is with the Nuclear Energy Institute. Nice talking to you, take care.